Since April 2012, Madagascar has been facing a locust plague, which has affected up to two-thirds of the island. Wherever the insects went, crops and pastures were devastated, leaving many farmers in extreme poverty. In a country where 80% of the population relies on agriculture for a living, this plague could have destroyed the livelihoods of more than 13 million people, thus reinforcing the food insecurity. Many emergency programs, some of which were carried out in collaboration with FAO, have been implemented to help the victims affected by the locust crisis. At present, in June 2016, it seems that all this belongs to a time almost gone by. In 2013-14, Action Against Hunger implemented a nutrition emergency plan because, at that time, there were damages caused by the locust plague and quite a lot of farmers complained to our office. Today, there is no more evidence of a locust plague. Now, the problem is a drought. Although the situation is still fragile due to the many other Malagasy difficulties, the farmers today can at least cultivate their fields without any fear of a massive attack of locusts. To achieve this result, a three-year program in response to the locust crisis was jointly prepared by the Ministry for Agriculture of Madagascar and FAO. It started in September 2013 with the beginning of the rainy season and it ended with the 2016 winter season. Thanks to the program, everything was set up to start a real war against locusts. Madagascar's uneven landscape and the plague's extent meant operations had to be largely carried out by air. FAO subsequently deployed mobile aerial bases, which moved according to the dynamics of the locust populations. All the bases were provided with the necessary equipment. At least one aircraft, either a helicopter or a fixed-wing aircraft, four-wheel drive vehicles, trucks, sprayers, and all other inputs required for control operations such as pesticides and fuel. The bases were operated by qualified national staff supervised by international consultants with long-standing experience in locust control. It is from these bases that the survey and locust control operations were undertaken. By the end of the three-year program in June 2016, more than two million hectares had been treated. Fighting a major locust crisis, such as the one that has prevailed in Madagascar since 2013, is not an easy thing. It requires high technical skills, if only to manage large quantities of pesticides that have to be sprayed properly at the right place and the right time, while safeguarding human health and the environment. This is what we have done. Had we not taken action, this crisis could have gone on for at least another decade. In response to a plague, there is no other remedy than massive spraying of pesticides. Therefore, one of the major challenges of this campaign was to minimize their impact on human health and the ecosystem of Madagascar, one of the most extraordinary but also one of the most fragile of the planet. Conventional chemical pesticides have therefore been used when fast action to kill the locusts was required. On the other hand, when locusts were still in the hopper instar, the program chose insect growth regulators, which are relatively harmless to the environment and to public health. When the infested areas were near national parks or ecologically sensitive areas, Control operations were carried out with biopesticides only. Moreover, 
concern for the environment was paired with constant attention to human health. Blood tests were regularly carried out to ensure the safety of people exposed to the pesticides. Awareness campaigns broadcast on local radio stations helped keep people in rural areas informed so they could take the necessary precautions to protect their families, livestock and crops in case of control operations. During the campaigns, no major incident affecting human health and the ecosystems was reported. Throughout the three-year struggle, considerable human and material resources were required, under working conditions which were often very difficult. Furthermore, important financial means were needed in order to implement the fight. The implementation of the program was successful. The provisional budget, while initially estimated at 42 million US dollars, now at the end of the campaign amounts to 37 million US dollars. And this is thanks to the efficiency of field operations. However, even though the results are more than satisfactory, it should be kept in mind that the plague has been the source of distress for a large portion of the Malagasy population. During the last three campaigns, I carried out a lot of surveys throughout the country. I met peasants. They all lost their hope in life because of the damage caused by the locusts. Extreme poverty and suffering were everywhere. This shall not happen again in the country. For this reason, one of the main objectives of the campaign was to provide the country with all means to implement a real preventive locust control strategy in order to avoid such a catastrophe in the future. National teams have therefore benefited from the presence and the experience of international specialists in locust control during the three years of the program. The most essential aspects of the program is knowledge transfer. We organized a number of workshops on survey and control techniques, on aerial base management, on environment and human health monitoring, and of the use of biopesticides. Locust control cannot be improvised. Thanks to the training delivered to us by all these experts, we are confident that we can properly implement preventive locust control while preserving nature and protecting human health. Furthermore, Madagascar will finally be provided with a central warehouse for pesticide storage that meets international standards. This warehouse will allow to store chemical products and to process empty drums with adequate safety measures for health and the environment. As of June 2016, we can say that Madagascar has benefited from an effective reinforcement of human and technical capacities, which constitutes a strong basis for the setting up of a preventive locust control strategy. We are now putting in place the preventive locust control structure and strategy. The donors, especially the World Bank and FAO for Technical Assistance, are supporting us, but the government also committed itself to putting its hands in their pockets, which means to allocate the necessary amount to ensure that the structure we are going to put in place will be able to function normally and properly in order to avoid plague upsurges. The three-year program achieved its primary objective, namely the safeguard of the food security of 13 million people. However, in order not to lose the efforts made by the international community and the Malagasy people during the three long years of crisis, the effective implementation of a preventive locust control strategy is essential and necessary. Indeed, 
it will avoid the ecological, financial and human consequences of a new crisis. Locust plagues are not inevitable. They can be avoided.